Hi, I'm Cameron Small, we develop Rome Marauders, and we're here at the Royal Armories with Jonathan Ferguson. We're here to look through some of our latest armory weapons we've been putting into the game. So here we have the Stoner 63A. A. Not quite long. Stoner 63A. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. quite a bit of variety, as you already yeah. know. We know it's an assault rifle, but this is an LMG variant. Yep. The game, you know, we draw a lot of inspiration from the Vietnam era. So we know that this was trying to get into that phase of the army. Um, it ended up landing in a Navy SEAL Navy kind of capacity, since the M16 just seemed to dominate. Uh, that's, that's kind of where my knowledge ends, so you're going to have to carry me for the rest of the way. But uh, what I understand, obviously, it's 5.56. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a gap in our army for a 5.56 LMG. So this is oh, why ideal. we're here. <laughs> exactly. So um, any background on Stoner himself? I'm assuming it's not some tribute to Cheech and Chong, and that's actually the... <laughs> The weapon designer's surname. Inevitable, um, inevitable. Uh, yeah, especially Vietnam that, War. <laughs> pretty ideal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, Eugene Stoner is yeah. the original designer of the what we call the Armalite in the UK, still even today, just about. Um, the uh, AR-15 is, of course, the most famous of those. M16 being the military variant. He was the designer of the AR-10 in 762 nice. by 51, and then kind of under his guidance, a team redesigned it to the AR-15 that we all know, which is, of course, your standard infantry rifle for most of Vietnam, for mm. most people. But as I understand it, the sort of tactical gap was literally a light machine gun, something that was portable, short, easy to handle, but high rate of fire and controllable as well. And that's where this thing comes in. So this is Eugene Stoner, one of several designs of his after he's moved away from Armalite and he comes up with something a bit different um, mm. quite a lot different actually a whole a whole family of weapons a the, the term weapon system is kind of much abused in the firearms community mm. it's usually just a rifle or a pistol mm -hmm. but I think you can definitely call this a weapon system. it earned the name yeah it's a very what you could say modular fighting battle rifle system with lots of inspirations that, I mean you even see an M60 on the top here you know, I see a, a very unique kind of heat shield. And, but what I must start with is this amazing mechanism at the front. So the cocking handle, very unique. I've not seen it on anything before. Um, despite being, I'm assuming this is a different variant since it's quite small. I feel like I've seen a, a larger one. I, honestly, it's a bit of a mystery to me um, as to why they, they moved the, the cocking handle there, except that this is a very compact weapon. So, if you've run out of real estate for a cocking handle, yeah. bearing in mind you have to build your, your rifle, your carbine, your, your fixed machine gun, your tank machine gun, uh, your Bren style box magazine fed light machine gun, and this version all have to be built from the same basic receiver and, and components. So they've, they've got to come up with compromises to get everything to work. So that's my impression as to why it ends up getting moved out here and on the bottom rather than on the side, because otherwise you would struggle to make these modular parts fit together in different mm. arrangements. But um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have interviewed Stoner about that. <laughs> yeah, Maybe there's some material out there on that feature mm. specifically, but that's, you won't find that on the other variants of the family. It's only on the belt-fed um, LMG version. I mean, it's a terrific detail. And, and we also we talked about earlier about the different ways of mag-feeding this, this weapon. There's a whole range of them, but specifically with the LMG, we saw a Navy SEAL with a, a giant drum mag with an almost unique kind of banana style feeding into the top here, almost looked like a snail mag of some kind. Um, but again, it's all 5.56. Five, yeah. Um, so that's exactly what, you know, that's the hole we'd have to fill. But uh, in terms of the round capacity. So the big SEAL drum is 150, that's for sure. This right. is not going to be more, this must be 100. So the steel, steel drum is 150, and this is 100. I believe. Okay. I mean, we can't stick to that. That's unfair, and all the rest of the gamers that do not have this weapon. <laughs> That's quite overpowered. Um, so, yeah, it comes in very different types of magazines, but this one is a box. Um, now, 100 rounds seems like enough, but would they be carrying more? I mean, they must have been. If, if they're carrying, like, six to 800 rounds, like some of these... 800. Some of these sources suggest, then you would have to. Um, you wouldn't necessarily carry it because this is um, it's not a box magazine, it's a box for a belt. So conceivably, 
they, they, would, they would likely have been carrying lengths of belt around the neck or in some other container mm. and then pulling them out and feeding them into the box for feeding. So this is speculation on my part, mm. but they may not be carrying multiples of these. Whereas the sort of hybrid um, drum mag belt box thing that the seals end up with, which is one of the few stoner things that mm -hmm. we don't have yeah. with the feed tower on the side. Um, I think you'd have to be carrying that preloaded, really, because you've, you've got to wind it up. Mm -hmm. You can't stop behind cover and... Well, of course, the thing with it, with, with a pure belt feed, is you don't need to reload this thing. You can just Rambo it if you have to. <laughs> you can just feed the belt yeah. in and ignore this um, in an extreme situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas with those great big 150 round drum things, mm -hmm. I think you'd probably have to carry multiples of those. Mm -hmm. Must be, must have been. I'm speculating wildly at this point, but they must have been distributed around the the squad. I think um, something I'd like to read into more. Actually, yeah, Re maybe read some original accounts as to. Yeah, yeah. The frustrating thing there, as a sort of firearms historian, is that they they often don't give you the details of the kit, mm. which is completely understandable. Yeah, secret. <laughs> well, um, and and they're more worried about not dying and. Yeah, the enemy. <laughs> yeah, busy, <laughs> busy in secret. <laughs> um, so our, you know, obviously our game is like alternate history. So we're going to treat it as like the Storm is the one that won the contract for the 5.56 LMG um, of the, you know, the West. Um, but what, what did this lose out to in that sort of period? Why aren't we seeing it everywhere? Well, ultimately, I suppose it was the FN Minimi, which everyone knows, the M249 or you know, whichever variant you're talking about, um, L108, L110 in the UK. But there is a, there's a massive gap for most people. So the 5.56 LMG wasn't really a thing until the, the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. And that's, as I understand it, that's when the SEALs finally stopped using um, their specific version of this, because that's all they've got available. You know, from 67 until uh, maybe 85, it's the only game in town, really. Other people are developing 5.56 LMGs. Mm -hmm. um, you've got things like the Ultimax, but no one's really using that. Um, so it's kind of a niche, I guess it's, it's quite a niche application. It's, it's perfect for small patrols behind enemy lines where they've either got to break contact and get the hell away or carry out some sort of specific assault or, or ambush or something. Mm -hmm. And so a hell of a lot of belt fed 5.56 is great for that. For a conventional military light machine gun, traditionally it was thought to be a bit too weedy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really have the range or the punch to suppress the enemy in the ah, same way. I see. That, okay. Yeah. So that, this is why the traditional LMG isn't that light because it's something like um, 716 NATO or 303 or 7.62 by 54 mm -hmm. still in in use. Okay. So uh, later on, like most things in, well, a lot of things in in the military world, something is pioneered by special operations forces. Not everything trickles down, but a lot of it then trickles down. And so the requirement became, was created effectively for a 556 light machine gun later on. And by that point, this thing's a bit dead in the water. There isn't really a going version of this available anymore. And so what ends up winning for most people is that FN. Okay. But for our use of breaching spaceships, ambushing them. In an alternate reality, it yeah. could definitely have been this. In the, the Space Navy. Yeah. <laughs> you got yourself the Storner. Great. Yep. Thank you so much. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome.